and we are live. Well, guys, you know, I'm so excited for this call. Uh, for those of you who are watching it live, I'm grateful that you guys are here. If you're watching this uh, on my YouTube channel, you're watching this recorded, um, you know, equally as grateful. We're recording this right now. This training is taking place uh, today, Monday, July 27th, at around 4 p.m., and uh, we've got people from all around the world right now buzzing about Bitcoin, right? And I, I call this, this call Bitcoin is booming. And the truth is, guys, you know, Bitcoin has been booming. It's a very exciting, you know, innovative space, right? The, the cryptocurrency and blockchain world is very innovating. It's very exciting. But it can also be very confusing. And, and you know, it's kind of like a little gray, and uncertain in, in specific areas. You know, we, when we saw Bitcoin back in 2017 kind of go on that big rally, some of you guys are familiar with that rally. Some of you have no idea what I'm talking about. Don't worry, I'm going to show you on the charts as well on this call. When we saw Bitcoin go through that original big rally, it was crazy because, you know, I'll take you back to 2015, one of my very, very, very good friends who I met through a friend, he was out in Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria. So if you have any Nigerians on the call, shout out. Uh, because of someone from your country, I started buying Bitcoin. So, and I'm actually going to show you guys. So my friend out in Nigeria was trying to educate me, broke little Jason on cryptocurrency. And uh, he was, you know, sending me videos and huge lists of videos. And it was a lot of stuff. And to be honest, I was broke and lazy. Probably why I was broke was because I was a little bit lazy with certain things at that time. But he was sending me tons of videos explaining mining and explaining, you know, the future and why Bitcoin is destined to end up at 10,000 and then 20,000 and then 50,000. And, you know, at the time, funny enough, if we go back, Bitcoin was actually, let me, I'm going to pull it up because there's a cool story behind this. Well, at least it's cool for me. Hopefully you guys think it's cool. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. So February 24th, 2016 is when I entered the cryptocurrency space officially. I had been doing some research through 2015, but I was, I was not in a good place. You know, 2015, I found I Am Mastery Academy. I knew nothing about trading. You know, I got in as a student. In uh, January, we launched and started really going all in with I Am Mastery Academy. And my friend texted me on Facebook and he said, he said, bro, did you listen to me and buy Bitcoin yet? And I said, no. He said, you, sir, are so stubborn. He said, go download Coinbase. I'm going to send you a gift. So, okay. So I download Coinbase on my phone. He says, uh, click this button and, you know, tell me what your wallet address is. So I, okay, cool. Copy the address. And a few minutes later, I received, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it. Here, it says February 24th, 2016. Maybe if I lower the screen, let me see. There you go. Hold on, it's better. All right, well, anyway, you get the point. February 24, 2016, $2.99. And that was the best gift I think that I probably ever got. Because what I started to do was I hooked my bank account up to Coinbase. And I started buying. My next transaction was $50. My next transaction was $100. My next transaction was $200. $150, $150, $15, $100, $100, $250, $700. So what I started to do, this is when Bitcoin, guys, Bitcoin, some of you guys are going to freak out. Guys, Bitcoin at this time was around five, let me see, $600 a coin. It was around $600 per Bitcoin and I was buying and I was not in a good financial position, but I just kept buying a half a Bitcoin. I got a half a Bitcoin for 500 bucks. 
0.4 Bitcoin for 500 bucks. 0.27 Bitcoin for 300 bucks. I mean, I was just buying, collecting, buying, collecting, buying, collecting. And then I ended up sending two and a half Bitcoin and I got scammed. That hurts today a little bit, a little bit. But redemption season was strong. And so I just, you know, wanted to open this call to pay homage where homage is due because I, because of a friend who pushed me back in 2016 to have an open mind, I decided to enter the cryptocurrency space and take, you know, $50 here, $100 here and just get involved. Today I have a very large crypto portfolio up for the purposes of this call to keep it professional. Um, and to be honest, this isn't about my result. I'm not going to talk to you about my current portfolio. We're not going to talk about uh, the money and all that stuff um, because this is really an educational call. We have over a thousand individuals here and I want to show you why crypto is booming. It's been booming and why I believe that you need to step into that next step of education. So here's a couple things about Bitcoin that are very, very interesting. Now, Bitcoin has a very unique model. And a lot of people don't realize what makes Bitcoin so special. Well, first and foremost, blockchain backs the whole idea of cryptocurrency. And what blockchain is, is essentially it's a digital ledger, right? It's a, it's a ledger, just like when you do bookkeeping, uh, if you go to the doctor and they, you know, keep your records, it's a digital record. Okay. And every single transaction that occurs goes through the blockchain, creates a permanent record, and they just kind of stick one on top of the other so that they cannot be manipulated. Now we know without getting into politics, without getting into the world's current status, we know that there's a lot of manipulation. We saw instances where politicians were able to get rid of evidence, were able to get rid of things. We, we might know some circumstances where, you know, hospital bills or records could have gone missing, right? So blockchain is actually so essential that when people talk about Bitcoin being a scam or what, a bubble, all that stuff, there's one thing that they don't realize is that they're, they're de-edifying cryptocurrency. Okay, they're de-edifying cryptocurrency, but they don't understand blockchain because if you understood blockchain, you would never say something like that about crypto because it's, it's a pure and utter solution, right? So, Blockchain is the, is the foundation. Now, Bitcoin is very unique because it's essentially digital gold, right? Almost every transaction that takes place, not all, but essentially all the roots of crypto revolve around Bitcoin, right? It was the first created. It's the, the strongest technology. And, and here's the cool part. Yes, there's some technologies that do different things. There's some technologies that are faster, some that have better tracking, better this, better that. A Bitcoin is the king. And the reason why we get so excited about Bitcoin, and sometimes you probably see, you know, oh, Bitcoin's definitely going to, you know, 40,000. Bitcoin's definitely going to 75. Bitcoin's going to 100K per coin. Here's the reason why. I want to explain to you guys something on a deeper level than what you might know, right? So we have something called supply oops, and demand, okay? So here's the cool part about Bitcoin. Bitcoin, there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin in supply. So essentially, there will never be 21 million and one Bitcoin. There will always be just 21 million Bitcoin in supply. Okay. And basically how it works, it's like a, it's like a block, right? It's like a digital block. And inside of that big block, there's all these little blocks that represent one Bitcoin, right? So you, there, there's miners, you've heard of Bitcoin mining. There's miners that are essentially computers 
cracking these, the guy, Satoshi, who created Bitcoin, put these intense mathematic equations in place so that in order to unlock a Bitcoin from the block, right, you would have to, you would have to disseminate this mathematical equation that really everybody has set up these mining machines, aka high level computers that take a lot of power and they crack those codes. And so there's, remember, limited supply and the mining machines are the ones that are out there collecting Bitcoin. Now, the way that they designed it is that there will be something with mining called having, right? And having takes place. Let me go back. I want to show you guys some stuff here. So let's talk about having Bitcoin. Okay. So let's see if I can find, okay. Bitcoin having what you need to know. One second. Okay. Every 210,000 blocks mined, or about every four years, the reward to given to a Bitcoin miner gets cut in half. Okay, so let's look at the last few mining uh, halvings. And I'm gonna explain this to you. I wanna get the exact numbers. That's what I'm looking for. One second. Let's see. Hopefully, this is the right article. I had it up in the whole screen. Here you go. Okay, this is exactly what I was looking for. So, in 2009, when someone completed a mining block, the reward was two, uh, 50 Bitcoin. So, if you, yes, mining sounds amazing, right? You're, you're doing these equations, you're getting 50 Bitcoin. Awesome, right? Then, in 2012, three and a half, four years later, it gets cut to a reward of 25. 2016, it gets cut to a reward of 12.5. And in 2020, now the reward, this happened about two months ago, mid quarantine, this happened. And the reward is now 6.25. So in approximately 2024, we're going to go to about three point, what would it be about 3.125 Bitcoin per having. So the amount of Bitcoin being mined is going in what direction? Down. Now here's what's crazy. Experts estimate that right now, five to six million BTC are gone for ever. Five to six million Bitcoin estimated are gone forever. So you take that 21 million supply and you drop that down to let's be conservative. Let's say it's only 5 million. Let's say now we're really working with a new total of 15 million BTC. Well, let's go back to our trusty friend Google and let's say how many Bitcoin are left on mine. It's around 3 million. 4 million. Oh, uh, no, that was in 2018. So let's see if we can find something recent. I think it's 3 million. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. In February, uh, total in existence. Yeah. So, about 3 million, we'll just call it 3 million for the sake of this call. Approximately 3 million are left unmined. So, we'll have, you know, about what is that? 15% or so. 15, let me get the calculator. I think it's 15%. Three divided by 21. Yeah, it's about 14%. So about 14% are unmined and about 25 to 27% are gone forever. What does that mean, guys? That means that our demand is going in what direction? I'm sorry. Oops, I totally dropped the ball there. I meant... <laughs> Our supply is going in what direction? Down. The supply of Bitcoin available is trending down. Now, I read something a few weeks ago that 80% of people in exchanges 
said they were aiming to hold their crypto long term. And then you have BTC ledgers, banks, funds, like hedge funds, investment funds, and governments. Watch this. To me, this is the perfect storm. Limited supply only could ever be 21 million Bitcoin. Experts estimate five to six billion million Bitcoin by the time it's said and done will be gone forever. New total, really, we got about 15 million in supply. Three million left on mind at the time. So really, we're only circulating about 12 million Bitcoin total. 80% of people interviewed and, and filled out this little voucher. This is one, this was from one exchange. So this isn't obviously the most accurate, but it's a big exchange with a ton of people. 80 plus percent of their people said that they planned on hodling, right? That's what we call hodling, holding long-term, not trading or selling. So a lot of the crypto and then, and then the rest guys are being held on ledgers. I have, and this is, if you're serious into Bitcoin, this is what I recommend you do. Go straight to the website. Don't get it through anybody else. Don't get it through Amazon. Don't click on this ad. Go to shop.ledger.com. Get yourself a Ledger Nano X. It is a hard wallet. So you can store your crypto offline. Okay. You could take your cryptocurrency, put it in this little USB drive that is super secure. You become your own bank. What? Yes, you become your own bank, ladies and gentlemen. You are the bank now. Some guy was trying to sell me private banking. I said, my friend, I appreciate that, but I got my own bank. He said, what do you mean? I said, crypto. He's like, what? I said, yes, cryptocurrency. Like, I, I've got a nice crypto portfolio. I'm my own bank. He's like, all right, that's cool. But what about the real stuff? I was like, I feel you. I feel you. I will, will, I'll think I'll meditate on the real stuff, buddy. So, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of people have their crypto in ledgers. A lot of crypto is being bought by banks, funds, and governments. So look at this perfect equation, guys. Mining is becoming harder and less rewarding. The supply of Bitcoin is dropping every single day. And what's happening? The demand for Bitcoin is only getting higher. You know, we looked at 2017 as the hype. Bitcoin started exploding. People were making money. I had my biggest month trading ever. It was ridiculous. It did not last. I did not take profits because I was in the long term, but wow. And then all my friends from high school started becoming expert traders. All the people around me were Bitcoin experts selling everybody to buy, 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 buy. And it's easy to tell somebody to buy when something's headed up. Hello. Hey, something's going up. I think you should buy. All right, a bunch of experts, right? Then the market crashes back down to a reality and all these people leave, right? All, they, they, they settle. Uh, they, they leave like cockroaches when the lights come on, right? Here today, gone tomorrow. Cool. Well, now that Bitcoin has gone through a cycle, right? It's gone through a three-year cycle, which I'm going to show you on the charts. It's gone through this vigorous three-year cycle where now what's crazy is you're gonna see real levels of support. Real levels where, number one, supply and demand is working in our favor. The supply cannot increase. We cannot call a backup army. But Bitcoin plays such a pivotal role in the world's future that all these other altcoins, they're great, but they really depend on Bitcoin at the end of the day. Yes, some of them will be very successful, but Bitcoin really is the deciding factor. And mass adoption has not even taken place yet. See, we're, we're probably 10, 15, 20 years before where Bitcoin really will go. 
and we're already seeing generational wealth being created by, for me, a small $3 transaction from a friend in Nigeria four years ago. Unbelievable. So let's talk a little bit. Guys, take a screenshot of this. This, this little diagram right here, this understanding is, is potentially changing everything for you. <laughs> That's why I do this call, right? I, I'm not a DCX educator, but I'll tell you what Crypto Picasso, Nick Gomez, who actually, guys, Crypto Nick has become one of my best friends. He's on this call. I'm going to bring him on in a little bit. I'm going to make him a panelist right now, but I'm going to bring him on to talk about what he believes with crypto. I'm going to bring him on to talk about Ripple and he's like Ripple Nick, you know, uh, so I'm going to bring Nick on. I asked him to jump on this call. Picasso had something to do, but we're going to be doing these crypto calls. I'm going to bring in, you guys don't even know, but Chris Terry is the Bitcoin papa right now. That man is killing it. So we're going to do a lot of crypto talk because not for the hype, we've been trading this. So let me show you real quick what I've been doing that I learned in Forex on the crypto charts. So first and foremost, this is a daily chart for Bitcoin that I have been trading on. And I have some friends and God is my witness that know because we've been trading together for about five months. I did not manipulate anything on this chart. This is how realistic you can get with trading Bitcoin. Okay. Um, so back when, back when quarantine first started, Okay, so we're going to go back to, uh, we, were, we were looking at it starting around this time. So it was a little bit after quarantine, I would say the end of March, early April. Okay, what I look at a lot with Bitcoin and what I see a lot with Bitcoin from a technical standpoint. Now, if you guys are a part of IM Mastery Academy, this is some of the like SRT, support resistance trend lines, some of the earlier stuff that you're going to learn in the academy. Right. And from what I know, obviously Picasso is nasty with Fibonacci. Chris trades Bitcoin um, in time periods, which is wild. He's been showing me a little bit of his work and I'm trying to adapt to it. But what I love with Bitcoin so much is that it really ends up respecting support resistance trend lines better than almost the foreign exchange pairs. Like legitimately Bitcoin, either that or it just loves me. Maybe I've been nice to Bitcoin. I've spoke love into its life. You know, I told it, Bitcoin, you are powerful. You are grateful. I don't know, but I just think that it doesn't really care about me. <laughs> and, and it really just respects support, support resistance trend line. Now, on trading view, the other thing that I love is down here under the headlines for Bitcoin, you guys are going to see a lot of really good articles. And what I would tell you is to make those articles about 15 to 20% of your analysis, right? Because obviously everything you're going to see there is opinionated when it comes to foreign exchange pairs as well, right? Here's a beautiful trade. We caught Euro NZD using harmonics and I can actually use some of these, um, these articles from a fundamental standpoint, but remember trading is very highly technical analysis. So let's take a look. At Bitcoin, first and foremost, I don't want to lose this, but I really would like to clean my chart and I don't know how I can do that. Uh, Nick, do you know if there's a way I can clean my chart or start a second one without? Yeah, just put a, put another BTC USD and then just grab like Kraken or. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just take a different. Got it. Yeah, yeah. like another exchange. Yeah, that's good. Okay. I don't want to lose that. That, that chart is near and dear to my heart. Uh, I hear you, I hear you. Camp, this is Coinbase. Okay, cool. So, so let's go. This is Coinbase on the daily, right? Their price is basically virtually the same. There's a small difference. So we're going to see the same type of thing um, from an analytical standpoint, right? So first and foremost, guys, what you're looking for, right, is to highlight key areas when it comes to Bitcoin. So I talked to you about Bitcoin from a fundamental standpoint, why the, the makeup of Bitcoin just makes sense, the supply and demand. But what we really have to look at is, is these key areas. So what I do is I look on the daily, right? And you can even start on the weekly. But because we're doing this and, you know, I want to be respectful of your time. I want this recording to be watchable. So we're going to keep this in about one hour. I'm going to show you quickly on the daily some of the things I'm looking for. So you're really going to look for an area, right? And, and with Bitcoin, what I see is very key is where price closes. The wicks 
and Bitcoin are cool, but there's also a lot of like big whales in the market that can fluctuate the market very quickly, right? So sometimes with Bitcoin, we'll see these, like look at this wick right here. Whoop, whoop, like straight down in one day. So when I look at my SRTs, yes, I respect the wicks, but I'm really looking for three solid touches at least. But what you guys are going to see is that there's a lot of similarities in the way that we start to mark up charts with Forex and the way that we mark up charts with cryptocurrency. Now, I want you guys to look at something here. Recently, okay, we are looking at a very key level. We're looking for key levels. One of my favorite levels for Bitcoin is the 9187. I'm going to have to go down to the hour to get the to get it right. One sec. Okay. So, we're looking at 9187. As you guys take a look at 9187, please participate. All right, we're close enough. You as you get closer, you're going to see how much floor and ceiling action, how much dancing Bitcoin has done for the last few months around the 9187. Look at that. As you look closer, you got some love here. Ceiling here, broke, floor, up, down, ceiling, down, break, floor, <laughs> up, down, consolidation, down. You know, it's like that area, 9187, to me, is such a pivotal place. Hold on, guys. 9180, stay there. Okay, thank you. Is it, is it moving or is it me? Stay, please. <laughs> It doesn't want to stay. All right, you guys get the point. I'm not gonna waste too much time on this. Okay, there we go, we got it. So what I do for that key level, when I like a really, really, really like a level, I'll create another color for it, just so my eyes, guys, remember when you're charting, you're training your eyes to look for certain things. There's a lot more depth that you can take on trading. But I've, I'm telling you, I've given my charts to some of the best traders and they were like, eh, I think it's gonna go down and I'm like, not sure. And, and I've, I've been pretty successful. I'd say I've been about 85% in the last five months with Bitcoin. And I literally only trade off of key levels, support resistance and trend lines. So, and I'm just showing you guys, not that I'm a good trader. That's not what we're on this call for. I'm showing you how you can start to really understand what's happening in this market. Now, as we were dancing around 9187, what we started to see, and you guys will see this in my other chart, so let me make sure, where are we? So this, uh-oh, I hope it didn't delete the other one. That would be a big problem, hold on. BTC, USD, hopefully we still have Bitstamp. Okay, we're good. Whew. I got scared. All right, so you guys are gonna see on this. You see I have the 9187 here. I also have 9,000. And then I put something here down by 88, but I have all these key levels. So 5,000, then we have some touches here, some touches here. Now you'll see this area where I have this green box. Here's the reason why I did that. You got to look at something. Let's look here. BTC, USD, Coinbase. Let's go back. It has been a very long time since Bitcoin closed this high. We have not seen Bitcoin close this high. Hopefully the day closes above. We have not seen Bitcoin close this high in literally almost one year. So we have to look at previous highs, where it closed, but we also have to look at previous lows. And in the last few months, guys, this is right here. This is May, June, July, going into August. In the last four months, look at what we have. See, I knew Bitcoin was going up. Why? Look at that low. Look at that one. The next low, higher. Look at the next one, higher. All right, then we're like, all right, wait a minute. Are we coming back down? Nope. There was enough buyers. There was enough support in the market that the next high, we kind of create like a, almost like a wick head and shoulders. That's not an official pattern, by the way. <laughs> There's no patent on that pattern, but it's just something for you to look at. 
that almost, what do you guys see here? All the closes are typically higher than the next. That's a powerful thing in trading because what it shows you is that support is not just in the, in the horizontal lines, but support is in the trend, right? And like we've all heard, the trend is your friend. Well, what about this, guys? Look at this. You've got now a, a major squeeze. Look at this squeeze, guys. You see what I'm seeing? Watch this. Hold on. Come here. Okay. We start to create what I call a squeeze. And for the last few months, we saw Bitcoin's price squeezing. There it is. Look at you see that squeeze there? I'm gonna to get to a very, very cool thing right here. We saw this squeeze here, right? So we started to see all the pressure. Oh, come here, there we go. Right, we started to see all the pressure, and I'm just showing you guys this so you can get a visual. These are not like official, but look at what, you, what I see. It's a squeeze. We see all the pressure from the bullish side of the market underneath pushing up, which means that we're gaining more and more and more and more support. The, the, the market range has been narrowing, 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 and when that that bearish pressure was also pushing down on the market. So the market could not close any higher, but it wasn't closing any lower. And the median, look at this, the median was right around that 9187 level. So as I was looking at, at trading, every time that it would go below that 9187, I was buying. You know, I'm accumulating half a Bitcoin here, Bitcoin here, accumulating, accumulating, accumulating. When it was above, Right. Sometimes on MetaTrader 4, so I'm, I'm buying physical crypto into the ledger for an asset, but I would sell crypto on MetaTrader 4. So when it was above 9187 and I would dive a little bit deeper into some of these other key levels, I would sell it on MetaTrader, right? Take my sales there. So I'm still active in the market while I'm holding my crypto assets using this same exact analysis to be on top of the market. And then I literally, there's a few people on this call that, that were on a call with me last week. And I was, I was telling them, we were right here. It was July 14th. We were on that call. 15th, sorry. It was July 15th. It was that, it was that candle. We were on that call. And I said, guys, within the next week, I believe that the bearish pressure and the bullish pressure will meet to a point where one will take over the other and that will decide if we go back. See, I didn't know if we're gonna go back down. No, not that far. I thought we would go back to, uh, let me look at the other chart because I had it marked up perfectly, one second. I thought that we would potentially go back. The lowest I really believe that we could go is here. I didn't think we would go any lower than like that 84, but the absolute lowest is 7,000. That's what I felt. Now I don't think we'll go lower than 9,000. I don't think we'll see Bitcoin lower than 9,000 ever, ever, ever again, which is a beautiful thing because a lot of my buy positions are in this range between, you know, $600 per Bitcoin to uh, eight or 9,000 are my top, top, top positions. I don't have any positions above uh, like 9,500. So but right now it's pure profit, right? Um, I don't think we'll go back below nine, but there was a chance, right? There was a chance that we could go back maybe to here, to that low, test it, then come back up. But look at what's happening now. We saw that probably, honestly, because of the supply and demand, because of you know the structure of the market, because 
everything that's happening in the world right now with you know money being printed, stimuluses, wars, riots, all that stuff, a lot of uncertainty, I think that Bitcoin is becoming a much more relative option for us, for the people to say, hey, look, if we want change, we got our change. Let's become the bank. Let's get educated on cryptocurrency. Let's get educated. And guess what's happening? See, I know it's real because guess what? The banks, PayPal, are starting to adopt cryptocurrency. And the more that the big funds, there's a few haters out there, but they're just not educated. Either that or it's part of their game. To tell the masses, no, 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 while they're accumulating. While they're taking, guys, don't play. They're like, don't play in the sandbox. Meanwhile, the sandbox is filled with diamonds. And when nobody's watching, they're in there getting the diamonds. I believe that that's the game that some of the, some of the more influential people in our world are playing with Bitcoin when they say, oh, it's a bubble. Even our president is like, yeah, Bitcoin, I don't know. I, I can't say I believe that. Sorry. I was born, but not yesterday. Um, I truly believe that Bitcoin is a very long-term solution to the global world uh, currency situation, global trading, all that stuff. And so to shine a little more light, I hope you guys got some value. I didn't want to dive too, too deep into the charts, but I wanted to keep this more about welcome to Bitcoin. Um, I want to bring on Nick because Nick is partnered with Crypto Picasso. Guys, they are doing some incredible work. And Swipecoin has been sending out signals that are fire. Nick sends out Ripple and focuses on um, the Swipecoin scalper. There's some really good stuff with the scalper. They're doing so much stuff with the DCX package. So, you know, if you want to take this Bitcoin education to the next level, guys, so most of you already have the elite package. You can add DCX for 50 bucks or just go get the elite. And that way you can stick to whatever other stuff you're doing with Forex, but do not miss out on this cryptocurrency wave. I promise you guys, I wanted to do this call because I want you to understand why Bitcoin is exploding the way that it is today. Now, do I think Bitcoin will probably go back down? Yeah, I believe that Bitcoin could come back down. Let's see where it closes, maybe down to 10,500, or maybe to the top of this market, maybe 10.4. But if it holds above 10,500 or at least 10,000 for the next few days, I believe that we found new support and we're going to see a whole new world on top of this little 10,000, 11,000 area uh, for the coming months. So I'm excited. I want to bring up someone who I really respect, uh, a very, very, very good friend of mine, and someone who has really turned into such an amazing, amazing educator for our platform. He's deeply invested. I mean, he pulled up in a car and he had his license plate was XRP. And I was like, Nick, you are not kidding around, bro. His car is blue. That car was blue and white with the XRP. And I'm like, dude, this is literally, you're like literally Mr. Ripple. Uh, but he already, he understands crypto on such a level. And I really have learned a lot from him. So Nick, if you want to come in for the next, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, just really talk about your perspective on the markets, what you're seeing and what value you guys are offering. So that if people are really interested in crypto, they can go to your go lives. They can utilize you know, all the stuff that we're doing, man, that's amazing. I appreciate you getting on this call. I decided to do it last minute. You decided to jump on last minute. Um, but when I saw Bitcoin this morning, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, we're doing this call today. So appreciate you, my brother.